Our Empire Knights, any good? Someone requested a specific video, apparently not having seen I did a non-Demigriff Empire melee cavalry video, but I took this footage before tracking that video down. So let me cover this unit specifically. I'm a recovering Total War Warhammer 1 Empire main, you see. So I have words. Empire Knights are recruited for 850 gold and 213 upkeep, but that's not the full story. Empire Knights happen to be recruitable in one turn in the current state of the game. That's fantastic. On the other hand, they require stables, a tier 2 building, and a blacksmith, a tier 2 building. Now, blacksmiths are something you want anyway because unlike Total War Warhammer 1, you only have two recruitment slots default. You need blacksmiths to start expanding them. Stables are good too, but you're competing with things like city walls for Aldorf or your capital generally, if you go this route. And at tier 3, you probably desperately want a gunsmith, so building starvation is a real thing. What do you get for this expense? You get 60 models on Ultra with 6,480 health between them, which isn't anything special at all. But at 110 armor, they're not going down lightly. Missile block chance of 30. Leadership is a solid 70. Speed 78, charge speed 108, melee attack starts at 26 with an attack interval of 5.1. Now, the animations are pretty fast, stabby stabby things. But that melee attack makes you despair, unless they're charging in. No splash damage. Melee defense starts at 30, with weapon strength 30, split between base 21 and armor piercing 9. Relatively average damage, but with a bit of armor piercing bite from the weight and momentum. Charge bonus is 48, and mass is 1000 per entity, so they do kind of crash in there and knock stuff around. This is borne out by what you see in the raw demo combat. They're armored, mounted guerrilla fighters, charging in, doing a bit of damage, and charging out. Charging gives them a huge bonus to hit and enables a bit over 250% of their normal weapon damage at maximum bite. In contrast, they're not that good at pitched fighting. They're shock cavalry, that's their strength. In France's redline skills, speed of horse grants plus 9 armor and plus 9 flat charge bonus maximum, further specializing them as shock cav. Rank 7 knights benefit from strength of hardship, with plus 5 leadership, plus 5 melee defense, and 15% spell resistance. The main thing in the text comes from the specific melee cav section. Improved cavalry armor dishes out plus 10 armor and plus 5 leadership. Blinkers gets charge bonus plus 10%. Endurance training gives vigor loss reduction to all cavalry. And the inner circle gives plus 4 melee attack and plus 4 melee defense. Very helpful. Of note, Warhorse breeding gives minus 5% upkeep and minus 15% recruitment cost, helping you spam them. How do you use the Empire Nets? Well, people would call it lots of micro, but depending on the situation, you're gladly doing it, keeping the enemy honest with your infantry. More to the point, in a real battle, you'll have ranged to a greater or lesser extent. In my demo battle, I made the AI do weird things and didn't have a clean charge into the archer line at all. I'm not sure that was a net benefit, but knights devour missile units on charges. It gets messy when they can fight back effectively. Knights aren't there to just resist enemy missiles, they're there to resist yours. One of the biggest advantages of a charge is the morale shock. Charging into a unit under ordinary arrow or bolt barrage will hurt the orc boys a lot more than the empire knights. In this strange way, the knights have amazing synergy with regular free company militia because there's little danger of dying to a stray pistol bolt. Riding into a handgunner barrage is less advised, but it's just to say, when the chips are down, you can do a lot like this. In fact, with the knights, you must expect the chips to be down a lot because they have clear advantages but they're not dominant in the usual ways. So you are doing a melee cavalry version of focus fire. Your micro, quote unquote, is to select the opponent least receptive to your charge at a given moment. After that, it's an issue of army composition and what you find yourself dealing with. Fighting vampires? See direwolves out on the flank? You're not outriders. You can take them, wipe them out completely, and leave. See skeleton warriors without spearmen nearby. Frontal charge them. It's fine. Pull out. Charge them more. It's fine. Have two knights. Cycle one in, then the other. If you don't crumble the unit, you'll at least wear it down a lot. No need to stay engaged with spearmen for a minute. 15 to 20 seconds might be pushing it, but if you have a rear charge, if you can get in and help, that's okay too. These are the little decisions that will make you a good player of Empire Knights. They won't win alone, and they don't need to. I came to understand just how hardcore they can be in the Imperial Authority System reinforcement battles. That's 70 leadership, 
means they'll come back from running twice and fight to almost the last man. That means flanking charges, morale shocks, and probably lasting long enough so that supporting infantry die, break, flee, etc., leaving the knights in melee where they aren't the best. So that's how you lose battles. How do you win them? By charging again and again. That vigor loss reduction only helps you to do it better. Fatigue is a resource like any other. In a battle, if you can't rest them, they'll wear down and their advantages like high armor will degrade. But you can't just rest them while your infantry melts, so it's in and out. Finding the weak point, shredding low armor enemy targets because their AP still isn't that high, and praying to Sigma that high armor targets can get hurt badly enough on the charges to make up for them. Total unit HP aside, the point of this unit is a fair chunk of speed and a huge helping of resilience. Its offense needs help. Its ability to take hits is really high compared to most of your early game roster. This is why lords will beeline to your knights in melee and mess them up. Understand this, work around it, defeat the enemy's army first, lord last if that's what it takes. That's how you win with no help at all. Once you are getting lots of help, it gets better. Magic helping with the offensive side, as basic as harmonic convergence, helps a ton. Battle prayers? Check. Runefang boost? Check. Enemy half ripped apart by Hellstorm rocket batteries? Check. So yeah, the baseline is very helpful to understand, but the low melee attack, if boosted properly, make them very decent melee combatants for a period. But you seriously want them charging in. And while I don't advise it generally, there's a place in Empire history to have knights charging amidst your own friendly mortar shells, debuffing enemy morale to deliver the final blow and break a high priority target. It comes up, and the knights will still get hurt a lot less than most opponents. A special note, please look at my Volkmar video for more about his boost to Empire Knights. Like I said, there's a weird synergy between them and a free company militia, but providing the armor flagellants completely lack is a pretty big deal. You just have to keep in mind that it's two buildings, not one or the other, and the realities of combat mean Empire Knights probably won't win a battle for you alone. In combination, they can be legit hardcore. Finally, if you're playing Empire, the idea of going out to the field with at least scrawny archers is simply heresy against Sigma. Not only are you helping them, they're helping you. Just keep one thing in mind for survival in messy battles. Your shields block friendly crossbow boats from the front arc only, and friendly fire isn't. Take care, and have fun showing that faith and steel go a really long way.